So I think both personally and through business, we've been very pri privileged to have experienced some um, uh, good recognition and accolades through, through, our, through our careers. Um, sort of most recently, I was fortunate enough to have been named the top CA under the age of 35 by Saika, which in itself was an immense honor. Um, we've last year we've opened up an office in the UK, which as, a, as an entrepreneur, it's always good to expand into different markets. Um, and then recently, we've also been nominated as a um, sort of, oh, I've been nominated as Young Professional of the Year, and then also our firm has been nominated in the Finance and Commerce category um, as Consulting Firm of the Year in the South African Professional Service Awards, which, which happens next week. Um, but I think through all of that, I think the key, the key highlight and the key achievement for me is happens every single day when I walk into, when I walk into our office, and just seeing the growth amongst our team members is, is just incredible, and I think that for me is what keeps me going every single day. Uh, well, I mean, most businesses will tell you it's, it takes a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, and it's taken plenty of that. Um, but I think we have a we have a very much a core focus on our team, and I think that's that's what I owe the success, the success to. It's a culmination of efforts from every single team member that has been with us over the past three and a half years. So I think taking a business overseas or expanding a business into, into offshore markets is, is a very challenging thing. For me, there were three key challenging areas within that space and the three key learnings within taking a business overseas. The one is it's important for you to have either a good, um, a good business partner within country or a good, or good employee or a good team member sitting within that space. As an entrepreneur, it's always difficult to let go of control within your business. When you're expanding to different markets in different countries, you have to let go of a little bit of that control and hand over the reins to someone else that shares the same vision as you. Um, the second thing is understanding the economic and uh, cultural environment within that space. I think understanding, does, is your product a fit to that country? Um, a simple and probably most obvious example is in South Africa, BE consulting is a big thing, but in the UK it's, it's irrelevant and, and, and wouldn't, be, wouldn't be as big of a thing in that space. Um, so understanding the cultural environment and is very important. Also understanding the re regulatory environment. The last thing you want to do is get into trouble with, with, with governments in, in, in foreign countries. Um, and then the third thing essentially is, is having enough capital. It's an expensive exercise to be able to start a business in an offshore market and uh, you if effectively starting from scratch. You have to build up a brand, you have to build up a reputation and it takes a lot of investment capital to get to a space where you can operate efficiently and effectively within that area.